Suprematism is an art movement focused on basic geometric forms such as circles, squares, lines, and rectangles. Kashmir Malevich developed the concept of suprematism. Examples of suprematism art Donkey's Tail and Der Blan Reiter. In the early 20th century, Russia experienced huge changes in political, social, and cultural life during World War I. And within this upheaval, Russian artist Kazimir Malevich found suprematism. His new art movement focused on geometry and a vocabulary of few simple shapes like a cross, square, and a circle. But why the term suprematism? Frankly, Malevich believed his art would be superior to the art of the past. It would be purer, more truthful, and not distracted by the reliance of realism. Perfect example of suprematism art would be black square. It's very simple. One square black dominates the canvas. It's monochromatic meaning it only uses colors of a simple hue, in this case black, with shades of gray and black. Suprematism, the invention of Russian artist Kazimir Malevich, was one of the earliest and most radical developments in abstract art. Its name derived from Malevich's belief that suprematist art would be superior to all the art of the past, and that it would lead to the supremacy of pure feeling or perception in the pictorial arts. Heavily influenced by avant-garde poets and an emerging movement in literary criticism, Malevich derived his interest in flouting the rules of language in defying reason. He believed that there were only de delicate links between words and signs and the objects they denote, and from this he saw the possibilities for a totally abstract art. And just as the poets and literary critiques were interested in what constituted literature, Malevich came to be intrigued by the search of art's barest essentials. It was a radical and experimental project that at times came close to a strange mythicism. Although the communist authorities later attacked the movement, its influence were pursued pervasive in Russia in the early 1920s, and it was important in shaping constructivism, just as it has been in inspiring abstract art to this day. What is meant by constructivism? The term refers to the idea that learners construct knowledge for themselves. Each learner individually constructs meaning as he or she learns. Constructing meaning is learning. There is no other kind. The dramatic consequences of this view are twofold. First, we have to focus on the learner in thinking about learning. Second, there is no knowledge independent of the meaning attributed to experience by the learner or community of the learners. Let me discuss the second point first because although it appears radical on an everyday level, it is a position which has been frequently adopted ever since people began to ponder epistemology. If we accept constructivist theory, then we have to give up Platonic and all subsequent realistic views of epistemology. We have to recognize that there is no such thing as knowledge out there, independent of the knower, but only knowledge we construct for ourselves as we learn. Learning is not understanding the true matter of things, nor it is remembering dimly perceived perfect ideas, but rather a personal and social construction of meaning 
out of the bewildering array of sensations which have no order or structure besides the explanations which we fabric for them. Be still, partly a reaction against the decorative excess of Art Deco. Universal visual language appropriate to the modern era, a time of new spiritualized world order. Led by the painters Theo van Dosberg and Piet Mondrian, these still artists applied their style to a host of media in the fine and applied arts and beyond. These still, which means simply the style in Dutch, emerged in response to the horrors of World War I and the wish to remake society its aftermath. Viewing art as a means of social and spiritual redemption, the members of these still embraced a utopian vision of art and its transformative potential. These still artists espoused a visual language consisting of precisely rendered geometric forms, usually straight lines, squares, and rectangles, and primary colors. One example of these still is the red blue chair, originally designed in 1918, but not fully realized until 1923, when it incorporated the characteristic distilled scheme of primary colors. Red Blue Chair is one of the canonical works of the movement. The simple assembly Rietveld deployed was quite in intentional as well. He built the chair out of standard lumber sized available at the time, reflecting his goal of realizing a piece of furniture that could be mass-produced, as opposed to handcrafted. It can thus be seen that the first essential is to create one objective element of form, with the help of which one can express perceptions by changing the relation of one to another. Thus, in suprematism, there exists an element which has various names depending on circumstances. For example, the invariable forming, the supplementary forming, the deforming. It is called deforming if the relations of the elements in cubism are reconstructed into suprematism. Each such term expresses an action of some kind. The objective invariable forming element acquires enormous importance in the general development of suprematism form. It seems to me that to understand the architectural face of a period, if one is dealing with form of a period, one cannot do without such an invariable element. Throughout history, all architectural epochs have always had an invariable forming element.